Hello and welcome to the third video in this series, Making Simple Flappy Robin for Android using Cocos Studio X version 3. So the first video and the second video in this series then, hopefully you've watched, um, I talked a bit about the setup of the project in the first video and a little bit about the app delegate and the scene. Second video was the what can be nightmare setup of Eclipse, I hope that's gone okay. I'm going to be using for the, the next few videos in the series Xcode because I prefer it to Eclipse. Um, and then switching over to Eclipse when we start to actually implement the Android specific stuff where we start moving between the Android code, the Java code and the C++ code. But for now we'll be sticking with C, um, with Xcode because it also offers the advantage that later on when we start looking at different resolutions and aspect ratios we can very quickly change the size of the screen. And in fact one of the things that we're going to have a look at straight away here is the application itself. I explained how the scene is set up and everything I think in the first video. And now we're going to have a little look into the nitty gritty of it all. And one of the most important things um, when you first look at the scene here is we get the visible size in pixels of the screen and we also get where the origin is of the current screen in case the screen is being moved in some kind of way with like large maps or anything. And I find it always a good idea um, to log this to the screen, particularly when I'm starting out, just to check uh, what's really going on. So what we're going to do is, and we'll leave these in for a while, is just have the visible size with a percentage and let's make it a 0.1f, a percentage 0.1f, so we can have a look at what the visible size is. So we'll just say visible size dot width and we'll have visible size dot height. And I'm going to copy and paste this line, just put the origin there as well, which should be zero by zero. But it's always worth just double checking these things anyway. So we'll put the origin, so we want the origin.x and we want the origin.y. So now when I run the application, we should see down in the console uh, the window start up. And we can see here that the visible size at the moment down in the console is 960 by 640 and the origin is 0 by 0. Very good. But what happens if we want to actually take, change the size of the screen? Well, you can do this inside the app delegate. It used to be inside the app controller in older versions of Cocos 2DX and that was platform specific then. So I would go into the Mac section here, there was an app controller file somewhere and it would be a, essentially there's a window created there and you could change some of the window properties. Now it's made a lot easier. You can do it inside the app delegate. And the key thing is this line here. I'm just going to copy this line. Oops, no I'm not actually. I'll uh, comment this line out. And above we'll type GL view and then equals and then we we'll use the capital GL view as above and look at the create and you'll see that there's a create with rect. See the, this create up here was the one that was originally used just with the name but now we'll do a create with rect and this allows us to specify and uh, uh, the name here instead of my game we'll put simple flappy robin but allows us to specify a rectangle of um, what size we want the window to be. Now it used to be cc rect in Cocos uh, 2D X, but now it's just rect, all the cc's have disappeared, so we want our rect and then to create our rect we give the x and the y, so on my, I want that to be 200 by 200, then the width and the height. So let's just make this 480 by uh, 320 and let's now just run the application. And you can already see a much smaller window has started and down the bottom console here we've got visible size 480, 320. So that's a very easy way then to change our um, aspect ratio and screen size and that's also why I want to use Xcode for this series because before I go to Android I want already had to have checked how the application runs in all sorts of different screen sizes, aspect ratios, that kind of thing. So I'm going to put this then back to 960 by 480 because 960 D by 480 is what we're going to be using as the base resolution for the application. Now in the Cocos 2DX version 2 series if you went through that you'll realize that I tackled the scaling and resolution thing quite late on and it meant we spent quite a long video going back over some code and changing the way sprites and things were added to the screen to scale them correctly. In this series I'm going to try and clean that up a bit and actually in the next video following on from this one tackle the scaling and multi-resolution issue straight away so that we don't need to go back over code. However, I thought it might be better in this video at least to get some graphics on the screen, uh, namely the background and the floor, so we've actually got something to look at. So what you'll need to do is, available for download is the code that I've changed as usual for this video, but also the images, the background and the floor. 
Now the images, if I just bring across um, Finder here, I'm inside the project folder here. I've got it sort of on a on a tag just for this Kokos um, series. Here is the tester project I set up for the Eclipse video, and inside the simple Flappy Robin, then with the classes, all of the other Kokos uh, 2DX version three generated folders here, and you need to put these images, the the background, the BG images, the three here, and the floor images into that resources folder. And HD size is high definition, ND normal, and UHD ultra high definition. And what we'll do is, is they are based on the aspect ratio of 960 by 640. You can see that's what the HD is. The UHD double that, and the ND half of that. And what we'll do is, is we'll specify eventually when we load a sprite which extension we want to use for our image, depending on what the aspect ratio and pixel density of the screen is. But that comes a bit later on. If you're using Xcode, then what you'll need to do is you'll need to take these files, uh, these three, and just drag and drop them into the resources folder on Xcode, and make sure you uncheck copy items, and make sure you've got all of the targets, tick for iOS and for the Mac here, and click finish, and they're then available to use. I don't know whether you need to do a similar thing inside Visual Studio or not, so add the resources in that way. Um, on Eclipse, you don't need to do anything. The resources are automatically, when you build the application on the Eclipse, then copied into the relevant resources area. So now we've done that, let's uh, go back to Hello World Scene and let's go into the initialization and what I actually want to do is I want to just delete everything out of here all the way down to the return true, like so. And that then, if I run the application, should essentially give us nothing on the screen. And indeed it does, we've just got a 960 by uh, 480 And in fact I've just realised 960 by 5480 is of course completely wrong, I want 640 in here. But we've um, got nothing now on the screen and we can basically start from fresh. Before we do that I want to remove this menu close callback function here because we don't need it anymore. And also then inside the header file I want to remove here the menu close callback as well because we don't need it anymore. So back into the initialization. this is where we're going to start adding all of our as images and things to set up the main screen and in this video finally getting around to it the background and the floor. So the first thing we'll do then is we'll set up the uh, background sprite. So we're going to use the C++11 as they do in the examples with um, Cocos 2DX and I'm going to call this then our background sprite and then we can say that it's equal to a sprite which is the sprite class and we can just simply specify create and inside the create we can put the name uh, of the PNG, and because we know it's 960 by 640, then we'll use the bg uh, hd version.png, and that's all we need to do actually to create our sprite. But I do need to put a small p in there, otherwise, things won't compile. And now we've got our sprite, we need to set its um, position on the screen. So we used to use um, CCP macro here in the old version of Cocos 2D, which was just a point. Now we use this VEC2 for specifying uh, positions. You can just right click and jump to the definition of a VEC2 if you want to have a look at what the uh, class is. It's got its X and its Y here. Um, I'll leave you to the is zero, is one, angle, stuff like this uh, between the two vectors. It's basically a much more enhanced version of a point where you can do vector arithmetic as well. Um, but you can have a look at that yourselves. But we can also use it then for positioning the sprite. So to do that then we just say background sprite and then set position and then we want to say vec2 and then we can put inside here the x and the y. So we want our visible size dot width and we want to go in the middle of the screen obviously so we divide it by 2 and the visible size dot height and also we want to divide it by 2. And then now we've set the position what we want to do is we want to add it to our layer and the way we do this is we simply say this and then add child and I just want to check something very very quickly okay then we want to do this add child and then we just specify the sprite and then we're also going to specify what's called a Z index and at the moment we're going to specify this as zero what a Z index is is if I took another sprite now and added this on added it with a Z index of minus one it would appear behind this sprite if I added it with a Z index of one it would appear in front of this sprite if the Z indexes are the same then they appear in reverse order from what they're added. So if I did another sprite now with Z index naught, then that would appear to be on top of the background sprite. In fact, that's what we're going to do with the floor sprite. And later on, 
uh, when I'm not rambling so much in a couple of videos time we'll actually set up a constants file where we'll put some constants in for the Z indexes but for now we'll just leave it at zero. So this is actually all we need to do to add the background sprite to the application. If I run the application you'll see that now we have the background blue screen added. But something important to know about the positioning of sprites however is something called the anchor point and I want to talk about this and demonstrate it. So I have a VEC2 here again to set the anchor point. At the moment the anchor point of a sprite is set to what's called half and half. If I just bring up the small background here to explain, that means that when we specify the position of a sprite, of course we're specifying one point, but the sprite itself occupies a lot more than one point, it's got a width and a height. So the question is, is which part of the sprite gets put at the position we specified? And that's what's specified by the anchor point. An anchor point of 0 by 0 would say the bottom left of the sprite is positioned at the point you specify. An anchor point of 1 by 1 would say the top right point of the sprite is positioned at the point you specify. By default, this anchor point is half by a half, which says that the middle of the sprite will be put at the point you specify. It's important to get your head around that one because it can get very confusing later on and it's also a very handy thing to be able to use this anchor point. So what we're going to do is we're going to set the anchor point actually at um, 0, 0, so 0, and then 0 0.5 for the Y. And what that'll do is if I go back to here, I've said that the X then anchor point, it should be anchored at zero, so the left-hand edge. So that'll actually have the effect of moving the sprite and positioning the left-hand edge in the middle of the screen. So if I just run the application now, and now you can see that our background has indeed moved to the right um, and is no longer sitting properly in the screen. And in fact, just to labor a point, if I now do a half also, uh, sorry, to zero with the Y, that means the bottom of the sprite will be positioned in the middle of the screen. So we're going to get the middle of the screen having the bottom left-hand corner of the image, like so. So I'm just going to go back and set that back to 0 0.5 and 0 0.5, like so, and run it, and you'll see that the background sprite lands in the middle of the screen. Good. So now what we want to do is add our floor sprite. So I'm going to do something very bad here and copy and paste these lines and change this to floor sprite. And that will now add our floor sprite when I change this name into the middle of the screen, just like the background sprite, but in front of it because they have the same index, but the floor sprite was added afterwards. Here you see the floor sprite. But we want the floor sprite to go down the bottom of the screen. So the way we'll do this is first of all we'll say that we want the Y position to be a zero, so the bottom edge of the screen, but then we'll have to set the anchor point of the Y to zero as well, so that the bottom edge of the floor sprite is placed on the bottom of the screen. And that's why I wanted to describe to you about anchor point. So we'll make this 0, 0.0 and we'll also set this point here to 0, 0.0. And now if I run the application the floor should be sitting on the bottom of the screen. And there you have it. And that's why anchor points are particularly useful for doing this. And it's easy thing to forget. So if I put this at 0 0.5 and run it again, it'll look like the floor is on the bottom of the screen. But the problem is, is only half of the floor is actually showing. And you can often end up uh, a little bit confused as to why a graphics are not looking quite right. And that's often the reason when you want to sort of um, have something on the positioned relative to the edge of the screen. So that then is the application with the background and the floor sprite um, at least added and you can start to recognize a little bit of how the game will look. And what we're going to do now though is we're going to move away then in the next videos from graphics and we're going to start um, setting up already the scaling and stuff and the picking of this extension correctly so that we can already um, not, not have to worry about then for the rest of the application. That's all set up. So uh, that's it then for this video. I'm sorry it's been a little bit long-winded and full of explanation. I promise it'll get a little bit quicker and hopefully shorter and sharper in future videos. So thanks very much for watching and see you in the next one.